Chris and Jomar and Jared. Um, there's no microphone, so I'm going to attempt to enunciate and hit my consonants. We'll see how that works. I decided to do something um, in the spirit of what I take to be the spirit of this red door, which is something that I admire, um, which is to put one's working process on display, and to, which is always an experimental and risky thing to do. And it could be a mistake. I wanted to actually read something from this red door's uh, mission statement, so to speak. I'm going to skip part of it because Chris, Chris has already mentioned some of these ideas. But um, So it says here, this red door is a collaborative attempt by artists Joe Martin Statkin, Jared Friedman, and Christopher Stackhouse to expand terms and conditions that may define studio practice. Our room behind the door is a discursive space where we integrate and address to the plastic arts through a salon-styled rotation of ob objects, lectures, and some of the things that Chris mentioned. It is our hope that an open-ended interpretation of art and social functionality treated this way will inspire non-hierarchical secular discussion between artists and the general public about topics including arts education, politics, barter economies, social capital, personal taste and opinion, and friendship to develop a porous group conversation that is inviting to strangers and old familiars alike is the goal. We plan to keep the door to our studio open, literally, as often as we can. Whether we are working there, having an event, or just entertaining friends, we welcome visitors interested in experiencing the place upon which they are entering. So that's a little bit in the spirit of that statement is what I'm hoping to share with you tonight. Starting with the question, what are we here for? We kind of rush along doing our work and don't often stop to think about that. And so I'd like to, in my personal case, I'd like to dedicate this evening to uh, someone I knew quite and loved very much who recently passed, named Leah Abramovai. And in fact, haven't really had a chance to mourn her because of all this speed that we live through. So actually, I need to do a little howl right now. And if anybody feels like joining in, they can do so. Or if not, they can just hang out. Um, you might want to close your eyes if you're shy, or leave them open if you're not. Uh... She always had a way of 
connecting to each person that she happened to be speaking to. And that, among many other things, I'll miss. And then I thought of um, Franco, uh, sorry, of Allen Ginsberg's often quoted line. It's in his elegy to Jack Kerouac, um, which ends, um, while I'm here, I'll do the work. What's the work to ease the pain of living? And then a complementary idea from Frank O'Hara, which perhaps I'm more drawn to, or at least I, I try to um, use it again as a, as a key, which is grace to be born and live as variously as possible. And thinking of this Red Door's mission, it brought me back to something that Vivian and I and her brother, her, sorry, her cousin Vonder, who's uh, also now gone, um, were engaged in, in Boston in 1987. It was a performance space, not unlike the one that we're in now, called She's Leaving Home. Um, and so I thought that this whole evening and what I'd like to communicate today is about working together, a collaborative attempt that is a political as well as a personal action. I say this as I see people in the art world kowtowing to a certain set of agendas that seem to have humanistic goals, but which in fact are very self-centered, in addition to being dryly academic. Some of them claim to be working for goals that sound almost identical to the goals propounded by this red door. So I wanted to underline how difficult it is really to break down barriers, and there's a lot of lip service that's paid to that and to the idea of genre bending and um, working outside the, the box, but I think it doesn't happen as often as it's talked about. And, and this endeavor here seems to me to really embody it. And a term that, I, that is used a lot and that I think is useful is hybridity. And I think that's something that we see here. So how do we work? We poets who are solitary and seemingly in a confined space in the culture actually turns out to be not that confined after all. How do we work if we want to reach out to the world? One way is by collaborating with visual artists. And so poems for artworks, poems that are either written in response to artworks or poets and artists working together on collaborative books. And I'm going to share um, some poems I've written for the, for the painter Juan Usle, and I'm also working on a set of poems now for the painter John Moore. In addition, I'll be showing some work uh, from a book that will be published by Gervais Jasseau and his Collectif Génération, uh, which is dedicated to, to artist books, unique, uniquely made. Each book is, is handmade. Um, and so in that book, it's called Four by Five, and it has poems each of my, I have four poems for each of five artists, and Gervais and I selected the poems, the artists, that is, together. Um, he had this idea that he wanted an artist from every continent, and we didn't quite achieve that. But we have, have the group of Polly Affelbaum, Juan Usle, Nabil Nahas, Leda Katunda, and Philippe Mayo, and that book should be finished sometime this year. Um, another way that poetry can get out and about is poetry with music, and I'm going to share with you a section from an opera that I've written the libretto for, and it's a collaboration with the composer Sarah Sarhande, who lives in London. Um, another way I work with or, or collaborate with other artists is via translation. I've translated the Roman poet Propertius, and I'm working on a translation now of the Greek poet Hesiod. 
And then the, the kind of collaboration that I really love that is pretty rare, I'd say, it's probably, well, I was going to say it's, it might be rarer than poets and artists, but maybe not. Maybe it's about the same. But for me, it's been rare. And that is poet poet collaborations. And I've been working on a series that I'm really excited about with Barry Schwabsky this year. And we're going to read a couple of poems from that collaboration. And then um, the other thing is presenting events and publications and blogs. And as Chris mentioned, we've been working on Vanitas for several years now. And we're actually working on the final print issue of Vanitas. So I think as a poet, one of the most exciting things is having one's poems published in a magazine. Um, I mean, I won't say that it's more exciting than having a book published, but it's equally exciting, let's put it that way, uh, because of the community. That was a word that I wanted to bring in. I remember some years ago, um, when Angie Malenko edited the Poetry Project newsletter, she put out a questionnaire about community. And I responded to it, but I don't think I really understood the question in those days. But now I, I have a much better sense of what that means and what she was talking about. And I wanted to just mention that in Brazil, the word favela, which a lot of people know, or the kind of shanty towns, slums that are there and are actually pretty amazing, um, is not the term that is to be used anymore. The term that is used is comunidade or community. So on that note, um, I would like to begin by reading a couple of poems that have just come out in Marsh Hawk Review, which is online. So if you Google Marsh Hawk Review, you'll find all the rest of the work that's in there. The winter issue, it's edited by Tom Fink, a poet I have a lot of admiration for. And I think one of the things that's interesting about publishing is <coughs> you get to see poems come to life that have been dormant for many, many years and they suddenly exist. And that's the case with these two poems that I'm going to read. First one's called Walk. Walk around a land, provision turns to lead, a higher, higher meaning, old trees reckoning. That friend turn again against my head and waste. Haste margin float up. No one hear that song. A flat head, marble paint, sagging as seasons melt. Crust forming, crack adhere. Society a cup of milk. Go on the diagonal, the perch, through it. Curious circle, lengthen. Inherit grace where it may be, where no one is, where one's alone in space to chant grief. Space erupts, oneself singing as prime. Loss is nothing, each day is one. Do not fit that mold, toehold of new. Winging cracked mean, skies welcome vast. Accumulate disappointment, swim in teacup, distance from all those things. Succeed on whose turn, what way win? People know too many, too thin. And this one is called Private Domain. I actually wrote this poem in response to a painting by my father, Alex Katz, which was of a dance by the Paul Taylor Dance Company entitled Private Domain. Private Domain, an eagle shifts willingly, flying north to antecedents plunged abreast of seeing, interceded. Rigid appliance weed westward, organ tilt brigade orange nestle. Wing ornate clue symptom awry. Precedent mask in forest, plunge, a quest for margins, nibbled, rest. Queasy hying upward, 
coast north, sepulcher of torrid rock, height appended, rain's demeanor, supple weight, inured to press. Um, so now I'd like to read a series of poems that I wrote to paintings by Juan Usle, which are in his catalog for his current exhibition at Gallery de Lyon in Paris, that's ending this week. And let's see if we can get the pictures going. We're improvising in the previous years. Oh, okay, I'll try. <laughs> We have no microphone. Just Maybe we could, <coughs> if I can find my phone, try to use it as a light. You don't need to hear this part, I'm just mumbling to myself. What's the size of this? Um, 46 by 
31 centimeters. <coughs> Some of them are very big, over there. And one of them is huge, just the left bottom of my teeth is two, two by two and a half meters. These are like, some of them are small. Um, okay, now we're going to move to the next image. So this is, now we're going to see the images from 4x5 with collaboration that Connexion, Jenna Hatif, and Gervais Jasso are publishing. So for this project, as I said, we thought about these things take a long time. Remember Steve Clay once said to me about the book that Francesca Clemente and I did together. This is the slowest book I've ever done. You take Francesca said, that's good, it's going really well. <laughs> and I don't mind, I'm like that, I like working slowly actually. This book is also taking a long time. It took a long time just to choose the people to be involved and then trading the work overseas. But what happened was I got the idea that I wanted to have all the artwork by all the artists before I started writing the poems. And then the poems were going to have a form that was going to be consistent throughout the whole book. And the form is this. I have to say a little bit about it. It's, it's very formal, which is a little bit unusual for me. It's in fours. And so it's four stanzas, four lines each, four words per line. So it's really like a four-four rhythm. But in addition to that, I've been investigating ways to write on the street and not, you know, imitate Frank O'Hara. Um, so I've done that in different ways. And the way I did it in this case was I tried to condense as much information as possible into one word. So the words are not <coughs> syntactically connected. Sometimes they might seem to be, but in fact, each word is an isolated element and it has a few minutes of uh, rumination and observation built into it. So that's how it's composed. Um, and so there are 20 poems, but I'm not I'm just going to read, I think, three of them. But we'll get to see all the images that are in this project. So this is where by Polly Affelbaum. I'll read this poem. Man, punch, green, red, hydrant, chill, plate, light, pitch, black, tomatoes, rose, batter, avenue, old, picture, street, sweep, ice, dog, bend, scarf, purple, signs, metal, glass, camera, bell, reflection, puddle, wind, child, Time, flowers, face, decision. Lean, skinny, a butt, flux. Glasses, coat, green, backpack. Lavender, hair, walk, tie. Boot, edifice, sun, photo. Ad, sheetrock, cigarette, lipstick. Purchase. Bank, pinky, saunter, baby, coat, speed, smile. And then if we keep going, we'll see these are works by the French artist Fuji Mayo. That's another great thing about collaboration. Sometimes we meet somebody through collaboration. That was the case with this artist. I didn't know his work before. And they uh, put us in touch. Shaft, cladding, interior, hand, afternoon, marble, photograph, skylight, stair, marble, 
density, lift, tarp, ladder, library, heaven, legs, dog, shadow, bicycle, space, enough, not, mom, corner, classic, granite, bolt, ass, elevator, pink, thrust, pointy, block, desire, chill, lane, thrust, hip, flag, flutter, bright, scarf, passage, jean, pole, guitar, pod, pastry, mobile, leche, sky, blue, bright, walking, love, ready, open, street, canyon, space, comfort, demo, truck, These are some works by Juan Jose. And then these are works by my good friend Daniel Lamas, who is here with us tonight. And his work I admired and loved through the years. And I've, I've actually particularly admired his reinvention of, of his work, how he changes. And this particular change into doing recognizable subject matter or semi-recognizable subject matter these trees um, from his where he lives and he's from and his Lebanon was another shock and, and quite an exciting one. So we read one poem from La Vila's Trees. Door European northern refuse, blue electric daffodil tree, friend pose bank whitewash, truck coffee seat foam, bandana face blue church, azalea gothic ass worry. Garbage, headphones, shit, transition. Cream, age, sky, step. Radio, drizzle, drink, shirt. Morning, tulip, hyacinth, hydrant. Gate, drive, idle, scarf. Palette, flack, lock, call. Chill, apartment. Ranch, bear, bicycle, mug, puddle, lantern, jog, straddle, backpack, blossom, boot, gray, scarf, fuchsia. Okay, now I'm going to take a break from me and play, I'm going to play a section of audio from the opera that I mentioned. It's called Wild There's Light. And this is, um, so it's taken from the poems of Sextus Propertius, which I translated. And it's a kind of story, well, we made it into a story, the poems, but together they tell the tale of a young man who comes to the capital and becomes obsessed with a very sophisticated older woman and they kind of torture each other and fall in and out of love. And eventually she dies in the end of the, at the end of the fourth book of his, of his four books. Um, so this aria is sung by, by Cynthia, actually, by this woman. And it's about um, this kind of torture feeling that I've been talking about, but also about the idea of Vanitas, that life is passing very quickly and um, 
take advantage of that carpe diem idea that Horace used. But here it's a little bit more subtle, perhaps. Um, although we give all our kisses, we give few, is one of the lines in this art.
this is of the poet Hesiod from his poem the Theogony about the origin of the gods and also of the universe. And just to say that Hesiod was a contemporary of Homer's, so this comes really right at the beginning of Greek literature. And it's exciting to think that writing had come to the Greeks only recently. So I imagine him on, the, on Mount Helicon tending his sheep with an iPad, <laughs> writing this. Let us begin to sing of the Heliconian muses who possess the vast, numinous Mount of Helicon, and who, near the violet spring with tender feet, dance upon the altar of the almighty son of Kronos. And having bathed their soft flesh in Permesis, or the horse's spring, or holy Olmaeus, on highest Helicon made their beautiful desire-provoking dances. There they flowed, dancing, starting from that spot, shrouded in much air. By night they were marching, emitting a most stunning sound, hymning aegis-bearing Zeus and regal Hera, the Argive who steps in golden sandals, and the daughter of aegis-bearing Zeus, gleaming-eyed Athena, and Phoebus Apollo and Artemis who delights in arrows, and earth-surrounding, earth-shaking Poseidon, and revered Themis and Aphrodite of the flashing eyes, and golden-crowned Hebe, and beautiful Dione, and Leto, and Iapetos, and crooked planning Kronos, and Eos, and great Helios, and brilliant Selene, and Earth, and great ocean, and black night, and the holy race of the other deathless eternals. The muses then, who taught Hesiod this beautiful song, feed the lambs below holy Helicon. And the goddesses first spoke this word to me, the Olympian muses, daughters of Aegis-bearing Zeus. Rustic shepherds, base reproaches on you, bellies only. We know how to utter many falsehoods as if true. And we know how to speak the truth when we want. Thus spoke the quick-tongued daughters of great Zeus, and they gave me the scepter, a branch of leafy laurel, having broken it off, a wonder, and he breathed into me a prophetic voice, so that I could tell of things to come and things that came before. And they were urging me to hymn the race of blessed eternals and to sing of them always, first and last of all. But what are such things to me by oak or crag? Come, Hesiod, let us begin to sing of the muses who, hymning, delight Father Zeus, the great mind within Olympus, telling of things that are and things to come and things that came before, harmonizing their sound as a sweet, effortless voice flows from their mouths. And the dwelling of Father Zeus, the loud thunderer, laughs when the lily-like voice of the goddesses is spread about and it possesses the peak of snowy Olympus and the dwellings of the immortals. With deathless voice, they celebrate in song first the awe-inspiring race of gods from the beginning, whom earth and wide sky bore and who was born from them, gods, givers of good things. And after that, Zeus, father of gods and men, how he is the most powerful of gods, greatest in strength. And then the Olympian muses, daughters of Aegis bearing Zeus, they love to him the races of men and the violent giants and the mind of Zeus within Olympus. On Pieria, memory bore them, having had intercourse with her father, the Cronid, she who ruled the cornfields of Eleuthera as forgetfulness and a break from harsh troubles. For cunning Zeus slept with her for nine nights, going up into the holy bed, apart from the other gods. But when time had passed and the seasons turned with passing months and many days were completed, then she gave birth to nine daughters of single mind, and song was their concern in their hearts, and they had a carefree spirit, and just below the highest peak of snowy Olympus. 
There, their brilliant dances and beautiful dwellings, and nearby the charities and desire have their homes in festivity, emitting a lovely sound from their mouths. They sing, celebrating the laws and revered habits of all the immortals, emitting an especially lovely sound. And I'm going to skip a section here and go to the end of this piece. Now he's saying goodbye to them and he's going to start actually telling the story of the gods in the beginning of the universe. The children of Zeus are the muses. Farewell, children of Zeus, and grant me the charm of song. Glorify the holy race of deathless ones always in existence, who were born of earth and starry sky, and of murky night, whom briny sea nourished. Speak how the gods and earth first were born, and rivers and the endless sea raging with waves, and shining stars in the wide sky above. How they divided the wealth and distributed honors, and also how they first held many folded Olympus. Tell me these things, Olympian dwelling muses, from the beginning, and say what first came from them. And first of all, there was chasm, and still also wide-breasted earth, eternally trust the abode of all the mortals who hold the peak of snowy Olympus, and murky Tartarus in a recess of the broad wade earth, and Eros, most beautiful of all the immortal gods, the limb relaxer, who of all gods and all humans conquers the heart in the chest and also careful planning. From chasm, Erebus and black night were born. From night, air and day came to be, whom she conceived and bore, having joined in love with Erebus. And earth equally first gave birth by herself to starry sky, so that he might cover her all over, so that she would be a steady eternal seat for the blessed gods. And she bore lofty mountains, the pleasing dwelling places of those goddesses, the nymphs, who live in forest abodes. And she bore the barren sea raging with waves, Pontus, apart from his desired love. Moreover, then, going to bed with sky, she bore deep eddying ocean, and Koyos, and Kerios, and Hyperion, and Iapetos, and Theia, and Rhea, and Themis, and Memory, and golden-crowned Phoebe, and beautiful Tethys, and the youngest of all was crooked planning Kronos, the most terrible of her children, and her father hated the new boy. <laughs> Kill him, was Fort and S 
essay with this spelling um, means to examine something in order to assess its nature uh, or an attempt. So I think of it in both ways. Uh, it comes from the Middle English, which with the sense of the testing or test of the merit of someone or something.
Cemented from homes, manufactured in island, trees new painting, still sit, fish, across the here rough grown weed, remains make art, tangle grass, weed, deadly nightshade, knowledge, hold the fort of bird songs, motor, schooner out, sun, fishing long, shaved, casting up, out, souls, energy, another, holding hour, appearing vast to hold, appearance, Greek, Latin, at spot, corner, come now, five, six, woman, talk, no doubt, dormant, hold the fort, across schooner, she, in pink, deadly, two, stone, grow, vine, bubble, cyclone, rust, yellow, icon, spread, up, out, like the sails, television, boats, rest, car, street, lasts, a writing, remember, vivify, before evening, dusk, end, dinner, opens endless to peak this poetry. Poet here, saw, heard, this silence, cloud, turbulences of day, sun, lightning display, Aswan fell to shadow, houses. Now, multi robo shifts, three per side, one per person, music piped, continues, one paddle boards way out, red shirt and stick taken. 32. In afternoon, in front of brick painted colors, passes car, starts up, reveals flat. Man fought for a language, love for way to hold the fort. Voice one sees here, votes, writers who take care, particles. Man inside, no need to oneself, reverberation, eye, ear, closed devotion beyond what seen is heard. Facade won't be saying, find other color, bedeck painted. Sun, grass, picket fence, what one can see staring at boulder, face hewn by a painter. Thank you all so much for coming. Thank you.